Hi there, welcome back. For those of you who are joining first time, I am Hasid Thanki, the founder of presentation series called Intro to Individual Life Underwriting. Let's review tumors today. Again, this is Intro to Individual Life Underwriting series, so I am not going to dive deep into the deep water. I am just trying to get the feet sweat of those of you who are joining this life insurance underwriting profession. With that being said, let me start with benign tumors. So lot of literature out there, you will be uh, learning all these details from your formal instructors or the trainer um, and the various training tools available out there. But uh, just to quickly summarize the characteristics of the benign tumor and or to give an example, um, it, it goes like a normal cells and they don't invade uh, to the surrounding tissues, they do not metastasize or spread. Example would be the fibroid tumor, okay? Now, uh, what, when it comes to the benign tumor, what are the concerns as you review the medical records that you may want to look for or something that you want to keep in mind would be, uh, are there any complications? Are you uh, looking at the mass effect? Uh, are they prone to malignant change, meaning are they precancerous can turn into a cancerous a tumor? Those are the things you may want to look out for. Are we dealing with the functional tumors? Those are the details you want to pay attention to. Although on surface it says benign tumors. Okay. Now the real big deal is all about malignant tumors so you would study these oh, when we say malignant tumors three things should come in your mind first and foremost they do um, the, these are like the characteristics or the built-in features when we say malignant tumors so first and foremost infiltration okay uh, second is invasion okay and the third one is metastasis or this spray so one two three higher you go worse uh, mortality we are dealing with when it boils down to malignant tumor i'm not going to go into the definitions of all these terms but something that you may want to read and familiarize yourself uh, like a neoplasm hyperplasia or dysplasia or metaplasia in this intro session, I would say that pay attention to the contributing factors like environmental factors, family history, uh, history of benign tumor is a red flag that may lead to the malignant tumor. Or there could be some inflammatory conditions that may also contribute to the malignancy. So talking about the malignant tumors, these are the contributing factors that you may want to look out for as you re review the medical records. Now, certain things are common sense, understandable. Uh, let's say, for example, when you see uh, in situ, okay, there is no invasion in situ, so that means it's local. And then it can go all the way up to distant metastasis or a distance spread so from a relatively uh, low mortality all the way up to high mortality you will see in majority of the cases you will confront different scenarios like you may be underwriting carcinoma or once in a while you will see lymphoma or sarcoma a variety of things that you will encounter throughout your career and all these things are out there in detail per se requires separate sessions in details to cover this but I'm just telling you what you will be seeing as you move forward in your career and as you underwrite on any given day when it goes down to the tumors 
what you want to pay attention to is one of the key aspect and that is called staging in staging you can have uh, different aspects to look at location of the primary tumor tumor size number of tumors lymph node involvement cell type tumor grade presence or absence of metastasis those are the aspects that you want to look into now when we say staging I just quickly went over all the details but let me break it down into different segments for example you may have what we call general staging system so in general staging system you may have like a stage zero as I was saying in situ local no invasion okay or you can have a stage one with little extra or little higher mortality so that is called invasive cancer that is confined to the tissue or the organ of the origin okay then as you move forward you can have a further higher stage that is stage 2 that means it could spread to regional lymph nodes okay and likewise stage 3 we are dealing with involvement of adjacent structures and stage 4 we are talking about distant metastasis or spread now another popular way you will see all these details in the medical records it could be like a T and M staging so you will see T means primary tumor size N means lymph node involvement and M means metastasis or the spread except central nervous system tumors uh, lymphomas and pediatric tumors okay so those are the details you want to pay close attention to along those lines another important category or aspect that we call pathological in nature while underwriting tumors you want to pay extra attention to is called grade so staging and then grading grade grade could be low grade with low mortality intermediate little extra mortality high grade furthermore extreme mortality so the low grade intermediate grade or high grade is and there is a correlation or the word that you will see in the medical records they are described as well differentiated that means low moderately differentiated that means intermediate and poorly differentiated that means high grade and these things are very critical very important to price and extend any offer so pay extra attention to that in the clinical practice the doctors they will do all the physical exam lab test x-rays mri ct scan uh, as appropriate biopsy uh, cytology reports these are the various workup uh, you may see in the medical records so pay attention to and try to correlate all these details now when we are talking about tumors one important aspect to keep in mind is uh, are there any recurrence okay and when we say recurrence look out for the two words and sometimes doctors may not write in the medical records they will just say NED which means no evidence of disease and or you may also see CR which means complete remission now when it comes to the recurrence what you what you may want to make a note of is the fact that it requires a period of complete remission after which the original cancer reappears that is the definition of recurrence and that's why whether there is a recurrence or not that requires you to make sure that whether the first tumor has there been a complete and full remission no residuals no complications that is the first thing and then comes the question of recurrence now talking about the recurrence it may be local 
or it may be a distance spread or a metastasis okay it can go from lower to higher let's talk about the treatment and as we know the treatment could be either surgery or radiation or chemo or endocrine one or the other and or combination of all of this so depending upon the overall medical profile of the patient or the customer the medical oncology is um, the surgeon and the primary care doctor they work together and based on the medical profile of the patient or the insured they devise the treatment uh, the course of action or the treatment plan now let's talk about the prognosis that is what it boils down to because then we are looking at okay where do we stand now so and there are data that suggest that uh, prognosis when we say there is a correlation between the prognosis and the surveillance for example if you are dealing with the history of melanoma so do you see the follow-up skin exam so to speak or let's say you are dealing with a history of breast cancer do you see the follow-up memo okay or let's say uh, you are dealing with a history of uh, colon cancer so do you see the follow-up c-scope those are the details that you may want to look out for in the medical records okay and that was done to the surveillance now surveillance serves the two purpose first and foremost there is a confirmation of sustained remission of the prior cancer and second it is a screening for the onset of a new cancer so there is a direct correlation between the surveillance and the prognosis something as you read the medical records you may want to look out for now the real world there are going to be cases where you may not have up-to-date oncology records because of the remote history and, uh, and there are times that depending upon how remote it is it may make sense but bottom line you may want to make sure that besides oncology records the primary care doctor's records that you have in front of you are they complete current and convincing there are details that you can see from the primary doctor's records that you don't have to have the up-to-date oncology records because it is possible that the insurer may not have really seen the oncologist as he been completely in remission for consistent amount of period of time and if so then when you are reviewing the primary care doctor's records what are the things you want to look for look for to make sure about the general well-being there is no weight loss there is no recurrence of the tumor there are no complications no residuals are there other supporting data details documentation follow-up workup in the records that you can see that okay this is reasonable and likewise there could be variety of lab test even the lab test done for the insurance purpose should suffice for the liver or bone disease or sometimes when you are dealing with a, a leukemia or lymphoma try to see what is the current CBC right and or PSA with the prostate cancer and things like that so those are the details you may want to correlate to arrive at what you are dealing with and for the mortality risk assessment overall when it boils down to underwriting tumors how do we do that you will see risk not acceptable unfortunate decline or maybe a postpone at the heat of the moment or you may be able to offer a table rating or you may require a flat extra that flat extra could be a temporary flat extra or that flat extra could be a permanent flat extra and or there could be a combination of a or b or c depending upon 
uh, your actuarials, uh, homework, your client's experience that boils down to your company specifics and the life underwriting manual that your company expects you to follow. So, so it can mean any of these things. So you need to correlate and see what you can extend to the customer if possible. So let's stop here and we will start with, given we have started with tumors, so when we meet again, we will start with breast cancer. Take care.